Hello and welcome to our new lecture of the 16th century poetry presented to you by Dr. Ala, a lecturer at the Department of English Language, the College of Arts of Al Iraqiya University. This lecture is presented as part of the Google Classroom activity. Therefore, if you would like to raise any question, please comment on the video in our classroom and I will try to answer all questions as soon as possible. Without further ado, let's get started. Today we are going to discuss Laura, a poem by Thomas Campion, who was born in 1567 and died in 1620. I will start first by giving an introduction about the poet and then moving forward to explain the poem line by line. Thomas Campion was a poet of the Elizabethan and Jacobian eras. He wrote Latin as well as English poetry and argued that English poets should avoid rhyme and the stress and stress system of metre. He preferred the classic poetic system of building poetic measures based on the length of the syllables. He did not follow his own advice very consistently and few poets have followed his system. He is most famous for his lyric poetry which he and others set to music. His songs were sung in masks and also were accompanied on the lute which was similar to the guitar. عاصر فترتين the Jacobian era and the Elizabethan era كتب الشعر باللاتيني والإنجليزي وكان ثائرا على نمط كتابة الشعر في تلك الفترة حيث كان يدعو إلى ترك القافية في الشعر الإنجليزي رغم أنه شخصيا لم يلتزم بهذا الأمر في بعض قصائده ومنها هذه القصيدة التي سندرسها اليوم أغلب قصائد توماس كامبيون هي قصائد مغنات وكان يغني قصائده ويغني كلماته مستخدما آلة اللوت والتي هي مشتقة من العود العربي الذي انتقل من العراق إلى بلاد الأندلس ومن ثم إلى أوروبا وتطور بعد ذلك الأمر ليصبح على هيئة الجيتار في عصرنا الحالي لورا بروز تشيكت لورا Come, sing thou smoothly with thy beauty's silent music, I the other sweetly gracing. Lovely form do flow, from consent divinely framed. Heaven is music, and thy beauty's birth is heavenly. These dull notes we sing, discords need for helps to grace them. Only beauty purely loving, knows no discord, but still moves delight, like clear springs, renewed by flowing, ever perfect, ever in themselves eternal. Let's start now by the first stanza, where the poet says, Rose-cheeked Laura, come, sing thou smoothly with thy beauty, silent music, I the other sweetly gracing. هنا يطلب المتحدث أو الشاعر من فتاة يصفها بمتوردة الخدين أن تأتي وتطربهم بجمالها. In the first stanza, the speaker begins by asking that a woman he cares for or who he is at least infatuated with come and sing. يطلب من فتاة جميلة جدا يهتم لأمرها ويحبها ومغرم بها أن تأتي إليه وتغني. The speaker refers to this woman as being rose-cheeked. This shows an appreciation for her looks, but not much else. The poet could have utilized a deeper term of endearment, but chose not to. Instead, the compliment is entirely at a surface level. كان يهتم فقط بجمالها لذلك كان يصف الجمال الخارجي ولا يهتم بأي شيء آخر حتى عندما طلب منها أن تغني كان يشير إلى حضورها وجمالها الذي سينعم عليهم براحة البال والطمأنينة This shows that the speaker's love for this person exists in the same way In the next lines the speaker asks that Laura come and sing her beauty to him. He is not asking that she actually sing, but rather grace him with the music of her beauty. It is music which is silent, as it only involves showing herself to him. It is a sound which sweetly graces those who hear it, and he wants to be among those special few. في المقطع الثاني من القصيدة يستمر الشاعر بوصف هذه الفتاة الجميلة 
قائلاً Lovely forms do flow from constant divinely frame. Heaven is music, and thy beauty's birth is heavenly. The silent sounds which are made by Laura are further spoken of in this quatrain. The poet continues his description of Laura's music and refers to it as being made of lovely forms. وهذه الأشكال الجميلة كان يقصد بها شيئين الأول هو جمال الصوت والثاني هو جمال المظهر الخارجي رغم أن الشيئين هما واحد حيث لم يكن يصف صوتها بالفعل وإنما كان يصف جمالها الذي فتن عيون شاعرنا ومن حوله These do flow as she moves through his line of sight from consent or harmonies which have been designed by God the speaker sees her beauty as being so overwhelming that it is like she was divinely framed. With other worldly intentions, it is unclear at this point whether or not he has even spoken to her. Her looks are enough to inspire him to these verses. ولحد هذا البيت من القصيدة نحن لا نعلم إذا كان شاعرنا قد تكلم أصلا مع هذه الفتاة حيث أنه اكتفى بنظرات لها لكتابة هذه الأبيات الشعرية. In the next lines he expands his metaphor of her appearance and its relation to song as being heavenly. It is music which could only have come from God. While her current appearance is very important to the speaker, so is her history. The speaker states that her birth was a moment of divine intervention. كان يشبه الموسيقى بالجنة وكذا جمال هذه الفتاة حيث أن ولادتها كانت بتدخل إلهي كما يصفها الشاعر. The third stanza, the poet says, These dull notes we sing, discords need for helps to grace them. All the beauty, purely loving, knows no discord. The second half of the poem changes directions. The speaker has finished speaking directly about Laura and now turns to describe the nature of love. There is no further evidence that the two are in a couple. The relationship he speaks of could be completely metaphorical or even one-sided. في المقطع الثالث من القصيدة يقوم الشاعر بتغيير نبرة الوصف من وصف جمال لورا إلى وصف طبيعة الحب. The speaker refers to times in which we sing notes that are dull rather than beautiful when one considers the metaphor which has been outlining the poem. This is likely a reference to arguments and lackluster conversations. يصف الشاعر هنا أن كل الغناء الذي كان قبل لورا كان عبارة عن عبارات مملة لا قيمة لها وأن, وأن هذه القصائد السابقة والأغاني كان يشوبها الجدل والخصام أما بعد لورا فكل شيء قد انتهى حيث أن مع الحب الصادق لا توجد أي خلافات ولا مكان للجدل فيه There is no music in these moments it is obvious that he would have seen moments of discord, as it is only through a beauty that knows nothing but love that discord does not exist. She appears to the speaker as the perfect woman for whom it would be impossible to experience discomfort, anger, or any kind of negative emotions. تمثل هذه الفتاة للشاعر أو للمتحدث الفتاة الكاملة والتي من المستحيل أن يملها إنسان أو يغضب منها أو يجد أي مشاعر سلبية تجاهها. The speaker believes she would bring nothing but pure love to a relationship. وأنه مؤمن تماما بأنها لن تجلب سوى الحب النقي لأي علاقة معها. في المقطع الأخير من القصيدة يقول الشاعر But still moves delight like clear springs renewed by flowing ever perfect ever in themselves eternal In the final stanza of the poem the speaker continues his thoughts from the third quatrain He is thinking about the existence of love and when and where it thrives He speaks of it as being the force which is able to move delight it is all-powerful, but not violent. 
يستمر الشاعر في هذا المقطع الأخير بإكمال فكرة المقطع الثالث بوصف الحب النقي قائلا بأنه يحرك السعادة ويجلب السعادة وأنه يملك كل القوة لفعل ذلك ولكن بكل رقة ولا يشوبه أي عنف Love to the speaker is similar to a clear spring which renewed itself by flowing. Love perfect those it touches. The participants in this idealized relationship are eternal and ever perfect because of the love they share. يصف الشاعر الحب وكأنه جدول مائي متدفق والذي يتجدد دائما لذا فإن الحب يكمل كل شيء يلمسه وأن كل المغرمين يتصفون بالكمال على حد وصف الشاعر وذلك بسبب الحب الذي تشاركوه Now let's move to the poetic devices which is in the next slide Let's start with the first one As usual we start with the rhyme scheme Unfortunately, this is unrhymed poem, which is, as we mentioned earlier, according to the style of the poet that we mentioned. We have assonance in lovely form to flow, knows no discord, and also there is contrast when the poet says silent music, which cannot be. Also we have metaphor, when beauty stands for silent music, and music stands for heaven. Next we have simile, when the poet says, like clear spring. And finally, we have personification, when he says, love moves delight, as if love has the power to do so. This is the end of our lecture, and I hope to see you in the next one.